Southern Ireland because I have been reminded while researching this that Southern Ireland is not a part of the UK. But, um, the United Kingdom is made up of Britain, Britain, and Northern Ireland, and Britain is made up of England, Scotland, and Wales. And, uh, that, that, that last part I did not know, uh, so that was new, new information for me, that the Britain is England, Scotland, and Wales, and Northern Ireland is separate, but together they make up the United Kingdom. So I was happy to learn that. Um, but I want to talk about the culture and, um, I guess, slang may not be the right word, like some slang, but the, the differences in dialect, in dialects of English, the difference in language between, um, uh, United Kingdom and Southern Irish English and, uh, and American English, and, well, it's a little silly to say American English, just as it is a little silly to say United, United Kingdom and Southern I Irish uh, English because that's generalizing a lot. There's there's no there's no like uniform British United Kingdom Southern Irish uh, language or culture. It it differs from place to place. I'm sure from family to family, generation to generation, and between social classes, like lower class, upper class, working class, um, and same in America, and America, is, if, if anything, I feel like America, American English is less diverse, which I don't know how that happened or if I'm even right. But I, I feel like um, UK and Southern Irish English is really, um, really diverse, and yeah, the dialects and the, the slang is really diverse, and there's so many, like, uh, indigenous languages spoken there, like Welsh, Irish, um, Scottish. I, at least I think, well, no, it would be Welsh, um, Gaelic, and Scots, I think. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, and, and anyone feel free to, uh, uh, leave a comment correcting me, or, I, I know I say comment, but a review. For some reason, podcasts don't let you leave comments, but you can leave a review correcting me or giving me more knowledge or making fun of me, you know, whatever, whatever you feel like. <laughs> but let me see here. Let me, let me just go straight into the, um, British culture. I'm sure I will attempt uh, many accents during this, and they will all be very bad. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to say, this is the reason I wanted to do this episode in the first place, is because such a large portion of my listeners are, um, from the UK, or at least that's how, um, that's how Anchor tracks them. Um, yeah, if I, Anchor is the podcast distribution service I use to 
distribute my podcast to different publishers, and it tells me that 9% of my listeners are in the UK. Um, I wonder if it has a separate percentage for Southern Ireland. I'm really not sure. I should check that. Um, but, but yeah, 9%, that's a lot. And even if you factor in people using VPNs or people who are traveling and just accessing my podcast from the United Kingdom, which honestly, there's probably not that many people traveling right now compared to the before times. But yeah, even with all that, I'm like, it's just amazing how many listeners I have from the UK and Southern Ireland. I will include you, yes. Um, and yeah, it just makes me so happy. And so, yeah, thank you. I'm so grateful for you. Um, UK listener, Southern Ireland, Southern Irish listener, um, maybe you just think of yourselves as Irish. Do you just say UK and, and Ireland? Do you just say UK and the Republic of Ireland? Maybe. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. I'm so grateful for you. And I was thinking for a while of what might be a fun treat to acknowledge you and say thank you. And this seemed like a fun idea. So that is why we are here today, right now, talking about British and Irish culture. Maybe that's easier. British and Irish. British and Irish. British and Irish culture. British and Irish culture. Chur, chur, chur. That's the American way to say it. funny too because my my American accent is very close to like what is seen as the standard English uh, not English the standard American accent um, like the type of accent you would hear on the news um, but it's not exactly exactly the standard um, I think people from Ohio do have some some quirky quirkiness, but living in the city um, has definitely caused me to speak more, um, just closer to the the standard, quote end quote. Okay, so British culture, and I say British culture because I got um, a lot of these from a YouTube video. I, I watched a lot of YouTube videos. I got all of these, almost all of these from YouTube videos or articles. Um, and the links are all in the show notes and everything. But the uh, video was titled, um, I think it was British culture versus American culture. Um, so that's why I'm, I, that's why I say that, although some of these may, might apply to, you know, Scottish culture, Welsh culture, Irish culture, but here we go. Should I whisper? Should I do soft-spoken? Soft-spoken, soft-spoken. I'm not sure, I'm not sure which one I want to do. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just keep whispering for this one. I've done a lot of soft-spoken recently. But something apparently about British culture that I did not know. And yeah, I tried to pick out ones that I didn't know because I thought that would be fun. I knew, I knew a lot of these already that were in the video, but one of them was that uh, when people say, I live in an old house in Britain, or Ireland, I assume, too. That means the house is probably, like, 400 years old or more. And <laughs> as an American, I'm like, what? What? <laughs> I... Uh, uh, <laughs> it's just shocking. 
shock, it shocked me because I'm like here an old house is like a hundred year old house or I think I've lived I've typically lived in houses that are like 100 or 120 years old um, somewhere around there those are like the older houses that I've lived in but I've lived in a lot that are newer than that and maybe that's just an American thing um, but yeah it shocked me that some people might actually be living in 500 year old houses or older I was like what I can't believe that <laughs> I mean I believe it now but yeah it was very shocking to me <laughs> And that a lot of houses have conservatories in them, which apparently means a greenhouse, like a glass plant room, which that's amazing. I would love to have a house with a conservatory. I think I'm like, now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, why don't all, why don't all American houses have conservatories too? or greenhouses, like attached, attached greenhouses. See, actually, in America, if a house, if a house has a, a conservatory, it will be separate, and it'll be called a greenhouse. And even that's kind of rare. Like, if you see a house with a, green, with a greenhouse, you're like, oh, that house has a greenhouse. <laughs> um, apparently... Okay, this this was funny because the couple in the in the video that I watched were from Seattle, so they're like in America, dogs are never allowed in a food establishment unless it's a service dog. And I'm like, maybe in Seattle, but in Ohio, actually, um, a lot of places will let dogs in. Not not all. Definitely not all, not half. Um, maybe like one eighth of places will let dogs in, so you have to call ahead and be like, "Do you, do you allow dogs, or do you, or you know, you just have to know the place." Like living in Columbus, Ohio, my whole life, I'm like, I know, like, oh yeah, that place allows dogs, and that place doesn't. <laughs> but I just thought it was funny. Uh, the people from Seattle were like, no food establishment allows dogs. I'm like, huh, that's interesting. Um, but I guess the reason they brought that up is because pubs and cafes um, in Britain and Ireland uh, often allow dogs, or maybe sometimes. I don't know if it was often or sometimes, but I was like, cool. And another thing related to dogs, I guess in Britain and Ireland, people tend to assume dogs are friendly. Uh, like, if you're walking your dog, someone might just pet your dog or not be scared of your dog, uh, which I think is really interesting because in America, people, I mean, sometimes people will assume your dog is friendly, but in general, people will not make an assumption, and if they really want to know, they will ask, can I pet your dog, or is your dog friendly? And a lot of times people will say, no, no, my dog is not, not good with people. You know, that's the, that's the line, I think. Um, and pit bulls, pitties especially, there's a huge, um, bias against wonderful, beautiful pit bulls. Um, which are just terriers, um, and it's, it's just a real shame because they're the sweetest little nanny dogs, essentially, but it's to the point where in America, um, some cities, like entire cities, have banned, uh, certain breeds of dogs, and Pitbull is a common, a common breed to ban. It's kind of funny because Pitbull is not even technically a breed. I mean, I could rant about that forever, but yeah, I hate it. All dogs are good. It's owners. 
others that are bad. Uh, something I thought that was funny is that um, faucets are called taps, and I guess it's not that it's not that weird. It's not even really that funny. I just thought it was funny, but we say the faucet. Um, I wouldn't say the tap, but we do say tap water. Uh, so I thought that was funny that in uh, Britain and Ireland, apparently, people say taps and they don't say faucets or spigots. Th that's what we say in, in America mostly. And uh, another thing I found interesting is that apparently light switches are reversed and and uh, you tend to have to flick them down to turn them on. Yeah, I didn't know that one, so that was cool to learn. And then, obviously, you would uh, flip them up to turn them off. My brain is just like, what? <laughs> really? I thought that was very interesting, and plugs, I guess, have switches on them, like you can turn the actual outlet on and off. Personally, I like that idea. Then, you know, because I, I think it's pretty well known that um, electric appliances can still be using power, even if they're turned off if they're plugged in, at least in America, um, but, yeah, and it's kind of, it's just kind of risky to, like, if you think, if you really think about it, it's risky to have something plugged in, and it's, like, taking power, even if it's turned off, like, it's kind of dangerous, I like the fact that you can just completely turn off an outlet, you don't have to worry about unplugging something. But I don't know if that's totally, I don't know if that's in the entirety of Britain and Ireland. Maybe it's only in certain places. Let's see. Oh yeah, something the, the couple said on the YouTube video is that not as many people are on their phones in Britain and Ireland. And I'm skeptical. I'm like, wait, is that true? Is that really true? Are you sure? Are you really sure? It was only from, I mean, it was from last year. I say only. That was like 10,000 years ago. Last year, 2019. Um, but, but yeah, is that really true? I need, I just need like multiple people to verify this for me. Because... <laughs> Of course, it's like, it's a, it's a comparison, so it's like, I guess it's compared to Seattle. I can imagine in Seattle, a lot of people are on their phones, because it's a fairly big city. I don't know if it's actually bigger than my city, but yeah, to imagine not as many people on their phones is, is funny. I just want to be like, why? Why? What is it about Britain and Ireland that makes people not on their phones as much. I don't understand. Um, yeah, that just tickled me and confused me. Oh yeah, you all right? Meaning, how are you? Um, that's funny. Um, cause yeah, are you all right? Like, or like, you all right? You all right? I don't know exactly how it would be said, but, but yeah, saying that as a greeting, um, if I, if I just went to, uh, the UK without knowing anything, I would be like, and someone, and I went, like, somewhere, and they were just like, hey, you yeah, alright? I would be like, um, yeah, why, like, am I bleeding? <laughs> Yeah, in America, we just don't say, we just don't say, you're right, 
as a greeting. We say, how's it going? How are you? That kind of thing. How are you doing? That was, that was funny. Um, oh yeah, the first floor is the ground floor in the UK and Ireland, in Britain and Ireland. Um, that one, I, it's, I don't know if I could wrap my head around that. So you walk into a building, you're on the first floor. The next floor is the second floor. And yeah, I, <laughs> it's not, it's not typically like that in America. It's like, you're in a building, you're on the ground floor. You walk in, you're on the ground floor. Uh, then you go up to the first floor. Well, I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes the ground floor is the first floor. It really depends. Um... I can definitely see that being confusing, though. I'm confused just thinking about it. <sighs> oh, so apparently uh, British people are much quieter than Americans. Interesting. 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 adjectives and just smaller everything like smaller cars smaller roads take up less space um oh yeah what do i mean by smaller adjectives apparently like whereas i would be like this is that was amazing um i guess a british person a british person i guess a british person might be like Oh, it was not bad, or it was quite good. Not bad, quite good. It was quite good. It was not bad. Whereas I'd be like, oh my god, it was awesome, it was amazing, it was epic. I'm American. <laughs> not really, that's a, that's a stereotype, yet again. And whereas, and I'm also sure that the, that the quieter British people is a stereotype as well. Like it's a gen it's generalizing. I'm sure it's not the same for everyone, but I do think the smaller cars and uh, and smaller uh, roads and stuff, um, and also apparently the the London Underground or the Underground or the Metro, the the Tube, the Tube is is small. So apparently that's smaller. I think it's an island thing, personally. This is my pet theory, but I'm like, if you live on an island, I feel like you have to make things smaller, kind of. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But it makes sense in my head, you know, because Japan's like that. Everything is smaller. And actually, as I was, as I was listening to this, to, to all these, um, videos about about a British and Irish culture, I was like, you know, there are a lot of similarities to Japan, and they're both islands. Coincidence? I think not. I think not. <laughs> I mean, it still could be a coincidence. <laughs> I could be wrong. Oh yeah, crumpets. I still don't know what a crumpet is. <laughs> and I did not look it up. I just prefer the mystery. Just kidding. I, I'm sure I'll look it up soon. But I'm pretty sure that it's the thing we call an English muffin in America. Personally, I don't like English muffins. But then again, I've only had the ones that are like store-bought from a bag. I'm sure they're really good fresh, and I'm sure they're a lot better in England. <laughs> oh, crumpets. I wanna, I wanna, I've never visited, uh, Britain or Ireland. I would love to go there someday. Um, but yeah, I'm sure the crumpets are good. Apparently this is going 
ones are also really good. And, uh, yeah, I, I look forward to that because the scones in America are just not good. They're not good. I have had very, very few good scones in America. And I haven't, I haven't even had, uh, I've only had American scones. So, you know, I'm like, I can only imagine how good, uh, British and Irish scones are. But apparently, coffee in England is worse. So, oh, that makes sense, actually, now that I think about all the videos. They're like, we don't really drink coffee, we drink tea. So, and the tea is a lot better there, apparently. Or there's just more variety. I'm sure it's better, also. Although, this video did mention that, um, apparently, uh, people, people in Britain and Ireland take a lot of, like, commonly take milk and sugar with their tea. Um, I'm personally not a fan of that. I, well, I have it sometimes, but I would rather have just black tea or green tea or herbal tea, you know, what have you, or blended tea. I'm, I'm a serious tea drinker. I love tea. I love, love, love tea. I've always loved tea, so it's not shocking to me that people love tea. Um, it was a little shocking to me that, uh, English people and probably Irish people too don't really drink don't really drink coffee, and that the coffee is not great in, in, uh, Britain and Ireland. It's kind of sad, really. I, I love coffee. I, I love it. I'm, I, I drink just plain tea, no milk, no sugar, and I'm a fan of black coffee. Like, if you, if you get a really good dark roast coffee, there's, no, I could, I could never add anything to that. It must be, it must be taken pure, pure black coffee. Yes. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh yeah, I guess toilet paper is called a bod roll. At least that's what it sounded like they said. I didn't double check, but I was like, bod roll? Did I just hear bod roll? Like, B-O-D, roll. <laughs> oh yeah, zebra crossings, or zebra, zebra crossings, I guess it would be, um, instead of crosswalk. I had never heard that, and that is a really fun name, I love it. <laughs> oh yeah, so... I had heard this one before, but I still think it's cool, is that everyone talks about politics very openly in Britain and Ireland, and, uh, yeah, I think that's cool, because talking about politics in America is very taboo outside of the internet, and, uh, and, I don't know, and school, I guess, um, not school, like, college, university, um, but, but yeah, like, at work, or like with family, it's, it's really, it's really not talked about, and it's like, you get this sense that if you talk about it, you'll get in trouble, which is very silly, in my opinion. Oh yeah, another thing I found really interesting is that you don't really see, uh, beaters, beater cars, like old junky cars in, uh, in Britain and Ireland. I was like, really? That's another one. I'm like, is that really true? Because in America and definitely, definitely in Ohio, you just see junker cars everywhere. Uh, they have a lot of, like, names. I guess, yeah, junkers, um, not not broken down cars, like cars that people are driving, but they are like 
five years old, they're falling apart, the paint is peeling, like they've had a door replaced and the trunk is a different color than the paint, like the paint on the trunk is a different color because it's a replaced trunk, just like, yeah, those types of cars and the wheel wells are all rusted, rusted out, but people call them beaters, they call them clunkers, junkers, hoopties. Um, but yeah, I guess those are not common in Britain and Ireland. Someone please confirm or deny. I just find that very shocking if that's true. And again, it's shocking because I just want to know why. I just, I just don't understand. <laughs> I also don't understand why they're so common in America. I mean, I guess I kind of do. It's because no one can afford a new car. <laughs> Or is it just because more people drive? I wonder. I don't know. But, yeah, another thing to do with cars. Apparently, very few people have bumper stickers in Britain and Ireland. And, yeah, that shocked me, too, because um, in America, every other car you see has bumper stickers. Well... Well, okay, maybe not every car, but, like, one-fourth of cars, <laughs> one-third, one-fourth of cars, I would say, have at least one bumper sticker, and every now and then you will see a car that is covered in 10, 20, sometimes even 30 bumper stickers all over the back of the car, and window stickers, window clings, it's very... It's a thing. And then, if you have not heard of a phenomenon called the art car, at least I think it's called the art car. Yes, it actually is called an art car. I just looked it up. But they are cars that people glue things to. <laughs> like, they glue actual three-dimensional objects like... Um, I just looked one up that had markers glued, like hundreds and hundreds of markers glued to the entire exterior of the car. Um, here I've seen a, an art car, like we have, we have several art cars in my city, not very many, but, you know, several, um, but I, I've seen one locally that has, uh, doll's heads glued to it, and some are very creepy, like just with dolls and doll's heads and doll's pieces and parts glued all over the exterior. Some just have little figurines uh, glued. Some have, oh gosh, I'm trying to think what, what people, uh, what else people glue, just anything, everything they can find. Sometimes people glue little Hot Wheels. Um, sometimes people glue, like, fake gemstones. Um, but really, seriously, Google, if you can, type a art car into a search engine, and, uh, yeah. I, I recommend using DuckDuckGo because they don't track you. Yeah, not sponsored. That's just me talking. Okay, so this is, this next one is something I would love, like, I, this makes me want to move to the, to, move to the UK or to Ireland, um, but the fact that shops and cafes, and it's not stores and cafes, or not, not, uh, stores and coffee shops, it's, uh, shops and cafes, earlier than in the States, like the latest they would be open is five, whereas, uh, oh, I said five, um, what is that in world time? Uh, yeah. wow, it is hard to translate time sometimes, 1700, so they wouldn't be open later than 1700. Whereas in the States, uh, 
things are sometimes open until, uh, things are usually open until 2200, um, but oftentimes they're open 24 hours, um, not as much in my city, but definitely like in New York, Chicago, um, San Francisco, you know, places like that, places are definitely going to be open 24 hours. And I guess in Britain and Ireland, a lot of places are closed on Sunday, which, yeah, that's also just not very common, um, in the city at least. And I'm a, I'm a, a city person. And I guess people, um, from Britain and Ireland end messages with X and it means a kiss. I thought that was very cute. Uh, we, we really don't do that. We sometimes do put XOXO, but that's more like, like if, if someone I knew put XOXO after everything, I would think of that more as their, like a part of their personality, like that's just something this particular person says. Um, but yeah, I, I like that, that it's, that it's common to end a message with an X in Britain and Ireland. That is so, I think that's adorable. It's cute. It's very cute. Very cute. Um, let's see, let's see. Um, oh yeah, I loved this fact. Um, so I did not know this at all. That in England, town and village and hamlet are actual things and it's an important distinction. But that a town uh, has a market and a church. A village has a church, not a market. And uh, a hamlet has neither a market nor a church. I had no idea. I just got, just got educated, completely educated. Love it. Oh, okay, so I did. Look, I did research uh, into Irish, Scottish, and Welsh culture. So, cultures. Specifically, I hope my sources uh, gave me good information, accurate information. But apparently, it's an Irish thing to always thank the bus driver. That's, uh, it's not super common in the cities in in America, but occasionally here, here in my city, people will thank the bus driver, even though we're, we're a pretty big city. Um, but Ohio people were, were very, <laughs> typically very polite. <laughs> we're more polite than the rest of America, I think. <laughs> well, not, not that we are, not that the rest of America is rude, but if anything, what I'm saying is I think people in Ohio are overly polite. We're too polite, you know what I'm saying? In my opinion. Um, another thing that is apparently Irish is there's no, no very, very little spicy food, like, or like, what is, what is marketed, what is sold as spicy food is not nearly as spicy as the spicy food we have in America. And I thought that was really interesting. I'm like, hmm. I, I personally really like spicy food. Um, but yeah, in America, I typically don't really go with more than medium spice. But yeah. Oh yeah. So there's this word, apparently, this Irish, uh, word that, well, not, I guess, I don't know if Irish is the right way to say, uh, 
this is an Irish word, like it's a Irish-English word, I guess, since Irish-English is an English dialect, but hopefully you'll, you'll know what I mean. But slagging, apparently, is when you, um, insult someone you love as a term of endearment, um, or you like, it's like giving friends a hard time, but maybe more extreme, and apparently this is a very Irish thing, um, possibly a very British thing too, I'm not sure, but, uh, the word slagging is, is Irish, I guess. It's, that is not something that I like. I, I really don't like to give my friends a, a hard time or make fun of my friends. Um, I don't like to be in those kinds of, those kinds of relationships, even though I just told you you can make fun of me in, in a review, but not too hard, please. I'm fragile. <laughs> um, but no, seriously, in, in, like, with, with, with real, real friends, like a relationship that I want to be in for a while with someone, like if I consider someone a true, a true real friend, um, I don't want us to, I don't want us to always be, um, insulting each other as a way, as a term of endearment. I, I understand that some people might like that dynamic, but I just don't like it. I am a tender flower. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, um, some, some Irish English words. Uh, mo some more words I thought were funny. Gas, to mean funny. <laughs> some Irish terms I thought were gas. <laughs> like, oh, that's a, if someone's funny. That's a gas lad. That's a gas lad. <laughs> and uh, the word yoke seems to mean lad or person. I don't know if that's true. I'm just kind of got that as a context clue. Um, the crack apparently is a a really common Irish thing, like saying, "How's the crack?" Oh, we're just having the crack. Like, instead of, hey, how are you, you'd say, how's the crack, or how's she cutting, how's she cutting, how's the crack, oh, we're just having the crack over here, but I, I like that word, I think it's a, it's a good word, and, uh, oh yeah, I was reading this news article, and I can't believe I've never, I never knew this, I've never heard this word, but Tishuk. Taoiseach is the, the the title, the name of the Prime Minister of Ireland, the Taoiseach. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I hope I am. <laughs> okay, so a little, little Scottish culture. Um, not very much. I'm sure I would guess that a lot of Scottish culture is... Like, modern Scottish culture is similar to a lot of the, um, British, uh, cultural things that I just listed, but I did learn from some other videos that in Scotland, you are allowed to fill up your petrol tank, <laughs> I think that's the word, petrol, your petrol tank before you pay. Like, you fill it up and then you pay, which America hasn't done that for a very long time. Like, I think some places were still doing it when I was a kid, but it's just not very common, at least in Ohio or in the city. So, hearing that, I'm like, wow, places still do that. Amazing. Fascinating, fascinating. Um, Welsh culture, again, a uh, lot of things that I think are probably also fall under the British culture umbrella, but I guess, uh, social interaction in Welsh culture, people apologize a lot, and 
uh, the person who was shocked by this was from California, but me being from Ohio, I'm like, oh no, people, people in Ohio apologize all the time. It's like, we, we, yeah, we're, we're, we're overly polite. So yeah, that wouldn't shock me. Even going to Japan, everyone was very polite and I was like, oh yeah, seems, seems pretty normal because I was used to it. <laughs> Just because people in Ohio are so polite. And I went to New, like, I went to New York. When I went to New York, I was shocked with how, like, with how I perceived people as rude because I'm from Ohio. <laughs> so when I was, like, having trouble with the machines, people, you know, were very vocally getting angry about how slow I was being. The, the machines to get a ticket, I mean, for the, for the train. Um, yeah, and I was, like, shocked, because I'm like, what? What's happening? Why are you being so mean? I feel like in Ohio, um, if we had, if we had trains or subways in Ohio, if the same thing had happened in Ohio, I feel like whoever was waiting behind me would have probably come up and tried to help me figure out the machine, <laughs> just because that's the way people are in, in Ohio. Um, and it seems like, from everything I've read, drinking, alcohol, and smoking are much more common and much more socially acceptable in Britain and Ireland and, and Wales uh, than in America. Which I think, I think that's interesting. I kind of felt like I had heard, I had heard that before, but, um, it, it was still, it's still interesting to have it confirmed, like, oh, so that's definitely true. I still want to know why, though. I want to know all the answers. All the answers. Oh yeah, apparently you're not supposed to call Welsh people. Boyo. Like, that's, uh, probably an offensive stereotype, I'm guessing. Um, and apparently Tom Jones is a very common Welsh name. Like, a lot of, a lot of people are just named, uh, Tom Jones. And, oh gosh, I don't know if I can say this word. I wrote it down, but not the way to pronounce it. Hiraith, Hiraith, but I guess that's a Welsh word that means the longing for the homeland or for an idealized past. And I assume it's a good kind of longing because I can, I can see how that could possibly turn into a negative feeling. Um, like a longing for things to go back to the way they were. Or like... Yeah, I can just see it possibly being a bad thing, but I feel like the Welsh word means it. Probably that's the thing, is it, um, uh, they said in the video, they said it was very hard to translate that word. So I feel like there's probably a connotation of, like, positive, like, longing, like, in a good way. Nostalgia, maybe. Maybe, I'm not sure. see what else is there. Oh yes, the slang. I almost forgot. Or not the, the more British dialect. English dialect, maybe. The dialect of, well, I guess that wouldn't be a dialect. Well, yeah, it would. The dialect is spoken in England. Or, I guess, <laughs> uh, there's not, <laughs> remembering, reminding myself, there's not just one, not just one, uh, uh, dialect in England. There's many, 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 many. I think that's very cool. Um, yeah, and there's not just one accent. There's many accents, many, many English accents, many British accents. I love it. The 
let's see, jammy. Jammy was one that I liked, and I guess it means lucky. <laughs> For example, you would say, I can't believe I, uh, I can't believe you won that proper jammy. I can't believe you won that proper jammy, that is. How'd I do? <laughs> and I know people in Britain and Ireland say brilliant, but I did not know that they shortened that to brill sometimes. Like, oh, you got the job. Oh, mate, that's brill. Interesting, interesting. Um, scrummy. <laughs> that one I thought was funny. Um, used to describe something delicious. I bet it's short for scrumptious. Uh, it's still funny. Mrs. Walker's pie was absolutely scrummy. I had three pieces. <laughs> I love it. I love that word. Uh, peng. Peng, like P-E-N-G, apparently means attractive or excellent. Uh, a waste man is a loser. Bear. Bear, like, oh, I'm bear tired or I'm bear hungry, means, uh, very, like I'm very hungry or an excessive amount. Because it's not always used as a substitute for very. Um, hench or yoked can apparently mean buff or built. Um, dench means cool. Like, uh, as in Judy Dench, like you would just say. I guess he would just say, like, oh, that's dench. Just to mean, oh, that's cool. Um, some British, uh, some British that includes uh, Scottish and, and Welsh. Um, a scouser is someone from Liverpool. Liverpool. A scouser, someone from Liverpool. 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 Um, a dog's bollocks. Dog's bollocks. Oh, that's the dog's bollocks, that is. Means the best of the best. Spondulies. Uh, means money. I love that word. A kutch. Uh, is a Welsh word. Or slang for hug. It just means a hug. Um, uh, I forget. I forget if this is, I think it's Scottish. Go on your cell. Go on your cell. Basically means you can do it. You're doing it. Good job. Um, a numpty is someone who is annoyingly unintelligent. Um, a Barney is a fight. <laughs> You're bahooky. Bahooky. Bahooky is your bum. It's your bum. Um, pure, pure body, pure body, uh, means wonderful or brilliant in Scottish dialect, Scottish English. Um, some more Scottish, away with the fatties means you're kind of out of it. Um, probably daydreaming. Away with the fatties. Um, feared means afraid. And, uh, bolt your rocket. Bolt your rocket means get out of here, you, you silly person. <laughs> get out of here, you silly. But meaner, more mean. Meaner than that. Um, a sprog is a small child. Um, oh, this is interesting. Um, Irish English.
English for kiss is shift, or that's just one way. It's a synonym, synonym of kiss. And then Scottish English for kiss is wench. Like we, we wenched or we, we shifted. I assume shifted or wenched. This is all from research, I promise. Um, Let's see. Oh, Irish again. Um, your sham. Sham is your your pal or your mate. Um, gammy, like uh, weird or messed up, like my gammy knee, me gammy knee, my bad knee. Um. <laughs> This one's, this one, it's been donkey's years. It's been donkey's years. That's probably how they'd say it. It's been donkey's years. It just means it's been a while or it's been a minute. Um, and I like this expression, now you're sucking diesel. Just means now we're talking. Now you got it. Now we're winning. Now you're sucking diesel. <laughs> I like that one. Uh, all right, that is it for now. That is it for this episode, 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 episode. But again, thank you so much, um, British listener. Irish listener, Scottish and Welsh listeners, um, English listeners, thank you so much for listening and for leaving me great reviews. I appreciate it so much. I hope this was fun for you and not aggravating. <laughs> Feel free to let me know the show notes. There are a lot of ways to send me a message or leave me a review with your thoughts. This is Blue Sky.